good. Let us 
Those of you that can't stand, would you please stand with me for the reading of God's Word? This morning's scripture, reading will once again come from, from the book of Psalms, <clears throat> Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence come my help. Yeah, yeah. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will yeah. not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. Yeah, yeah. The Lord is the keeper. Of the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth forevermore. I read to you Psalms 121 in its entirety. May God add a blessing to the readers and the hearers of his precious word. He may be seated. Let us bow to prayer. Lord, this is us again. Coming before you. First of all, God, just to say thank you. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for life. Health and strength. Yeah. Thanking yeah. you from keeping us from one day to the next. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, we know it's not that we've been so good, but you've been so kind. You've been so merciful to us all. And we just want to say thank you. Oh God, we thank you to have a house to come to to worship you and to praise you because you are God. And besides me, there is none of them. Yeah. Oh God, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being the creator of everything. Yeah, yeah. The giver of every good and perfect gift. We just want to once again say thank you. Thank you. Lord. Oh God, we ask that you would be with us in this worship hour. Keep our minds stayed on you, oh God. Yeah, yeah. Because you didn't take your mind off of us. You kept us all week long. You provided for us all week long. Food to eat, clothes to wear, health in our bodies. And we just say thank you, oh God. Oh God, you've been with us since the rising of the sun and the setting of it. And we say thank you. Oh God, we come for this waiting congregation. They're waiting for a word. From on high. Yes, sir. Oh God, send it down to us through your hand servant. Oh God, bless the sick and the afflicted at this church. Bless those who are walking through sorrow's valley. Oh God, be with them only as you can do. Lift their bow down here, to oh God, letting them know that hope is only rising. Hope is yet today. You are hope. You are life, you are health, you are strength. You are that one that sits with us when you don't know which way to turn. And we thank you for being united. Come. Now, God, we ask that you would touch our past. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Bless him as he's your messenger. He's your servant, your child. Bless his wife, oh God. Give her strength. And then, oh God, we come for the seniors of this church. They've been toiling in your vineyard a long time. Oh God, bless Sister Williams, who is with us today. Touch her, oh God, as her footsteps get shorter. But she loves you, oh God. She praises you, oh God. And we thank you for the life she lived. Bless friendship as a whole. And bless our individual. And we'll be careful to give you all glory. All honor and all praise. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, and for that sake we ask it all. Amen. Jesus, I 
I'll never forget what you've done for me. Have he done anything for you that you're just grateful? And you'll never, never forget? Come on, be with us.
to. I won't be able to hold on to my hair. I won't be able to hold on to my strength. But I ain't going to forget what he brought me through. I ain't going to forget. Okay. I thought he had some children again. If you've been the recipient of a divine blessing, it ain't got to be mine like mine. It ain't got to be like yours. But you didn't wake up this morning because of an alarm clock. And you think that we're taking to the cemetery and put it on grave and see how they fold it up. You and I are here by the mercy of grace and the kindness of God. You, you know you could have been cut off. You, you know this week somebody would have hit you head on. You, you know last night the house was a follow up, burned up, or somebody broke in and killed you. But you are still here. You got a reason to praise God. You may not feel like it, but this ain't a matter of whether you feel like it. He deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves Jesus. I'll never forget what you've done for me. I'll never forget how you set me free. What medicine couldn't do, you did. What family couldn't do. What finances couldn't do. What education couldn't do. You did.
Thank you, Father, for a moment now to open your word and to walk in truth. Help us to cut it straight today. You are aware of the needs of all of us that are in this room. You know where we are in all places of our lives. Speak to us only as you can. Give hope, help, and encouragement. Yeah, yeah. There is conviction. We pray that it leads to conversion. Now, when you run to the cross, those who don't know Jesus and yeah. never confess him as Lord and Savior. Now, when you run to the cross, even they, though they be in this room or even on the other side of this camp, help them to trust him for salvation. Thanking you in advance for what you will say to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While you're standing, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. All right. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. And I pray that you brought your sermon notebooks with you. Pray that if you don't have one, we will make one available to you. And if you don't have one even now, we pray that you will attentively take note for what the Lord has to say out of his word. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. Hear the word of the Lord. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and there was a woman who for 18 years had a strict sickness caused by a spirit. And she was bent double and could not hear, I'm sorry, and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your sickness. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made erect again and began glorifying God. But the synagogue official indignantly began because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. All right. Began saying to the crowd in response, there are six days in which work should be done. Yeah. So come during them and get healed and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites. Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to water him? And this woman, the daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years, all right, should she not have been released from this bond on the Sabbath day? <coughs> he said this, all his opponents were being humiliated, and the entire crowd was rejoicing over all the glorious things being done by him. If you don't mind standing just another minute, let me read to you the transliteration of the original language from Greek to English of how that story really sounds from the original language. All right. And he was doing some teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, a woman had a spirit that caused an infirmity 18 years and was completely bent together by a curvature of the spine and was not able to raise herself up at all. And having seen her, Jesus called her and said to her, Woman, you have been released from your infirmity, and the cure is permanent. And he placed his hands on her. And immediately she was restored to an erect position, and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answering, being indignant, that on the Sabbath Jesus had healed, was saying to the crowd, Six days. There are during which it is right and proper to accomplish things. In them, therefore, you should come and be healed, and not on the day of the Sabbath. But the Lord answered him and said, Actors on the stage of life, playing the role of that which you are not. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath release his ox or his donkey from the feeding trough and lead it off? to give it a drink. Mm -hmm. And this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound, just think of it. 
18 yeah. years 18. was not a necessity in the yeah. nature of the case that she being released from this binding restriction on the Sabbath. Yeah. While he was saying these things, all those who had opposed him blushed for shame. And the entire crowd went to rejoice because of all of the glorious things which were being done by him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and before his very face. Today, we want to reunite the preaching subject from last week, touched by the Master's hand, to look at another miracle by the Messiah and to see how that miracle helps us even today. Yeah. You will recall, those of us that are avid television viewers or watchers, you will remember that there was in the 90s a popular fantasy drama television series entitled Touched by an Angel. You do remember that. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it had several leading characters, namely Roma Downey and Del Reese. Roma Downey played as an angel named Monica, and Della Reese served as her supervisor, Tess. Y'all remember? Yeah. And throughout the series, Monica is tasked with bringing guidance and messages from God to various people who are at the crossroads in their lives. And so while this television series only lasts over nine seasons, beloved, thank God for Jesus today, who is still in the business touching lives and making a difference. That's right. That's For the next few minutes, if you will give me preaching time, the miracle under consideration today draws our attention to at least four important insights, I believe, that will help us to appreciate what it means to be touched by the Master's hand. Yes, sir. The first point I would like to bring to your attention that's in this text is the crisis of this woman. Only Luke mentions this venerable woman who had spent the previous 18 years unable to stand up or sit up straight or even to straighten her crooked back. Few of us can even or even rarely imagine what life must have been like for this woman considering her condition. It is Luke, the physician, Williams, who points out two major matters that determine the depth of her dilemma. First, he reveals in verse 10 two important key actions that are taking place. Yeah, yeah. Walk with me in the yeah, text. Yeah. Jesus, yes, Brother Booker, is in the synagogue teaching and it's on the Sabbath day. All right. And while this aspect of the scene looks very innocent to me and to you, it is one that is loaded with tension, and here is why. Are you walking with me? Yes, sir. No matter where Jesus went or what Jesus did, he was always under the microscope of scrutiny and the center of controversy. He was always the object of ridicule and rejection. All right. And although he was warmly received by the people who needed him, on the other hand, there was another group that was defiantly rejecting him and those who were religious leaders who did not like him. Yeah. It's amazing how he mentions on this particular day in the synagogue. If I were to update it in the church, there was a woman whose life has been everything but normal, in which Luke tells us two heartbreaking horrors that this woman has had to endure. All right. She has been crippled in a double dilemma for 18 years. She's been held bondage by a satanic spirit. And as a result of her bondage, she has had to live in a bent condition. Yeah. Lord, help me preach your word to yeah. you. This woman had a spirit of infirmity that plagued her, not off and on. It didn't take the weekends off. It didn't celebrate holidays, but for 18 long years. Yeah. It, it, it's difficult to translate into English the terminology that Dr. Luke uses to describe her condition. But allow me to at least make some feeble attempt. Go ahead. There are medical terms of illness, chronic, and incurable. And because of it, she was bowed down by Satan, or you could say, in dumb. This, this poor woman could not 
God lift himself up and, and in the base of her back is a fixed at a right angle like a rusty hinge. Her, her back muscles are knotted to her to help her to bear the weight of the severe curvature of her back and her nerves are pitched from the misaligned burrow way. In other words, she looks like the female version of the hunchback. Can you imagine, can you imagine, can you imagine the pain that she's not in, but have been for the last 18 years, for almost two decades, can I just keep preaching? She has been a prisoner of deformity under the control of an agent of Satan. Her movements are slow because she can barely stand the pain. Right. Luke does not tell us how often she comes to the synagogue or if this is her first time showing up, but she's here today. Think with me for a minute, if you will. Consider the woman's condition. Would it not be fair of a comparison in respect of so many who are not only bent in their dilemma, but to take it a step further, to be bound by Satan is a double dilemma. Yes, sir. She's bit, and she's bound by a satanic agent that has her in bondage, and he has successfully done it for 18 years. I'm wondering, do I have anybody here wants to? Yes, sir. She wants to be free, but she, free, she wants to stand up straight and see what others see. But she's been in bound. And, and, and not only that, but because she's been in bound, she is living a restricted existence. Yeah. She yeah. wants a normal yeah. life like everybody else, but she's been in bound. And years where we cannot throw caution to the wind in passing judgment on why a satanic agent attacks her body and imprison her this way, this long, because it's not just her situation. It's her life story. Yeah. All right. And here it is, in case you miss everything that I have just said. Yeah. There are some people today, be they in our family, yeah. be they colleagues, co-workers, yeah. folks live next door to you, be they acquaintances, they are bent and bound. Uh -huh. Some have been in that condition for years. Whether they are in this condition because of their own doing and decisions or whatever else, understand that Satan has used it as an opportunity to keep them bent and bound. And the driving question is this. What is our attitude toward them? How do we view them? Take them a step further. What is our acceptance of them? Well, there's more gleam that speaks to and about the unknown and the unseen. Yeah. Go ahead. Go First, for 18 years, she has been in this bit of a condition which is caused by a demon spirit. Yes, Y'all got to be the Bible. We don't know if she did anything for this to happen to her, which leads us to this fact that things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and not only that, but things happen to people in life who don't ask for them and don't deserve them. How many people are enslaved to addictions of various kinds who didn't intend to be an addict, but it experiment went from experiment to entertainment to entanglement. Lord, have you preach your word today? Yes, yes. They didn't expect to end up being like this. They didn't start out being like this. No, 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 no addict, no alcoholic will tell you that my life's quest was to end up in this condition. But one drink led to another, one hit led to another. One shoot shot led to another. One snort yeah. led to another. One opiate led to another. And you know, we, 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 we rag folk out many times. There are substance abusers. But what about liars? What about busy bodies? What about mess makers? What about narrow minded people? What about basement thinking people? I want to see anybody praying before me. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. And like this woman, because it happened to her, consider not only the condition that left her in, but how long she's had to live in it. Yeah. 
How many people have suffered for years because of a bad marriage? How many people have suffered because of shattering and unfulfilled dreams? How many people have suffered because of dysfunctional family life and so much more? And like this woman, I wish I had time to really stay here, but I got to keep it moving because I got a lot of questions to do, and y'all want to go see the Browns play. It left them in a big condition. There are some people who are frustrated, been like that for years in a big condition. Angry, been like that for years in a big condition. You ain't got to say amen, amen, but speak for itself. There are some people that are confused, agitated, have no joy. Because they've been like that for years, and they've been like that because they are big and bad. But then second, stay with me. Because her suffering is very visible. Her suffering is open to everybody to see. While people would look at her and assume why she's in this condition, they really didn't know the complete story. Can I tell them both? Because yes. Luke says for 18 years she had a sickness caused by a spirit. Which says, y'all didn't want me. I've done the homework here. It says that she hasn't always had this problem. There are some people that are the way they are, think the way they are, do the way, do the stuff they do, think the way they think. They've always been like that. But something catastrophic happened. There's been the invasion of a satanic spirit. And I know you're going to hear a whole lot of preaching talking about satanic spirits, but that don't mean that they don't exist. Satan is not some red creature that is running around in some red suit with a long tail holds on his head and a pitchfork. He wants you to buy into that lie. And no one thing that there are dispatched among every one of us in this room and those of you that are watching, there is an enemy emissary that has been dispatched to wreak havoc in your life. Leaning on your education, leaning on your nice ride outside, 
and the beautiful house you're going to get in because somebody can testify that even with a beauty mess not to this, you can toss and turn all night long. You can have a whole lot of clothes to fit, but ain't got no weather going. You can have all the money you want and you won't buy yourself out of your heaven, your heartache, or your heartbreak. Can I get a witness? A lot of times we show up. I didn't write this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We show up all dressed up, all smelling good on the outside. Oh, but if we like a banana could just pull the lands back. You be shocked. Yes, sir. And for some things, some folk left the house just to get dressed, just to show up on the Lord's day. Let me hurry. I got about 20, 25 more minutes, and I'm going to be out of your way, I hope. But if not, we're going to still be all right. All right. That's right. She's visiting. Sing. How many of us in here? They are there. We just ain't said nothing about them. And we ain't showed no signs. That's why we got to make sure when we come up in the Lord's house that we keep in mind everybody is on a journey. You ought to be so prone face, so full of lemonade, drinking haterade, that you can't be nice to somebody on the road in front of you, behind you. Because you know what, why are you tripping like that? You need to keep in mind, there's a day coming, you're going to need a smile. There's a day coming, you're going to need a warm word. There's a day coming, you're going to need a warm handshake. That's why, brothers and sisters, saints of God, we got to come in the house of the Lord with the right frame of mind. Sincere kindness, because we don't know from Sunday to Sunday how many folk are showing up looking good, but they're bent and bound. And if it's not them personally, it could be their child, it could be their family member. I don't know about you, I'm not. let me hurry here. But I want to be among the people of God that will love me. I want to be among the people of God that will smile back at me. And I need to be among the people of God that are kind, that are warm, that are affectionate, that stand with me, stand by me, encourage me, and let me know that I'm not by myself. Thank God who couldn't stop telling this story. Can others stop this? Because she didn't know that things were going to change for, for which takes us from the crises of the woman secondary to the compassion of Jesus. Yeah. Look with me at verse 12 and 13. When Jesus saw it, that's all that matters. I pray you ain't coming up in here dressed to impress nobody. I want to tell you today, Jesus Kenneth, whether you got on khakis, blue jeans, polyester, whether you bought them from Nordstrom, whether you bought them from Kmart, don't matter. Because when Jesus came and took the door, it didn't say Jesus looked and saw what she had. Oh, Jesus looked at her and saw what kind of shape she was in. When he saw her, let me hurry here. He called her over and said to a woman, You are freed from your sins. He laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made erect again. She was made erect again. Which says that she, she knew what it meant to stand tall before. She knew what it was like to be you. Am I talking to somebody who knows what it's like to have peace before? Who knows what it's like to have joy before? Who knows what it's like to have good health before? But something that walked into your life. Jesus, he not only knows you, but he sees you. 
said something to us, but he also did something for us. Take a closer look with the cause. First, the compassion of Jesus moved him to speak to her. He invited her to come to him. What an honor. What a privilege to have Jesus recognize her. He takes notice of her without her having to ask him to. Stay with me, beloved, because yes, her bent over posture got Jesus' attention. She's in the synagogue in a fit condition over, and Jesus sees her. Can I tell you today yeah. that Jesus saw more than a woman bent over physically? Yeah. He could look also inside of her. He could see her heart's desire to stand erect, stand tall, as others could not because a satanic demon was holding her hostage. Here's some good news for all of us. Yes, sir. While we may be physically erect, straight up tall, Jesus knows where we are bent over in our lives, and he also knows the satanic attacks that we are under. Who knows about standing tall physically, but you're bent emotionally? Who knows about standing tall physically, outwardly, but you are bent and bound mentally and in other areas of your life? But don't despair. Because Jesus sees you and he sees our predicament and the pain that we're in. Stay with the text because he tells us in a worship setting, not after the benediction, but before everybody else, Jesus calls her to himself. And in doing so, he speaks words of power to her crippled condition. I, I, let me repeat them to you in case you're not quick to see. Woman, you are free from your sins. Do you see it, beloved? Lord, help me preach your word today. She came to church and got healed. Yeah. That, that, that's why you need to make sure you ain't playing a ball in your worship. Because you don't know the day that could have you could have been healed, but because you chose to sleep in. Yeah. Are y'all talking to those of you? And yeah. then some of us sitting up in here. You chose to come when certain choirs were singing. You only showed up when it was your time to serve in your auxiliary capacity. And I'm talking to somebody who knows that you don't ever want to miss Jesus when you come to worship. Yes. Uh, hello to you. Do I have anybody who will hold back at you? That ain't nothing like having an audience with the master. He knows every one of us. He knows where you are. He knows what you're wrestling with. Yes. He knows what you are going through. Take hope, beloved. Raise your hand and tell him thank you. That you not only see me, but you see what I'm going through. You see me and you see my situation. You see me and you know my pain. Yes. Just like he spoke to this woman's problem on that day, I want you to be encouraged. Because you need to know that Jesus can speak a word of deliverance to you today. And you need to know that when Jesus speaks, ain't no demon in or out of hell. Nowhere from hell on his way to hell. There ain't no disease that can stand in his way. Yes, Jesus not only said something to her, he did something to her, and he did something for her. Because I'm, I, I'm in Bible country, Brother Turner, verse 13 tells us, and he laid his hands on her. And immediately, sooner than right now, quicker than at once, she was made erect again, and, uh, and began glorifying God. Jesus touches her. He can, and that's why he touched her. He wanted her to be free from what she had been crippled by. That's why he touched her. She had no idea. She had no expectations on this day that Jesus was going to take notice of her. And out of all of the people that were there, you can tell us how many of them, he took notice of her. Can I say something to somebody here today? Great, Reverend. Yeah. You went to worship, bogged down, burdened down, Strapped, stressed, and stretched, and the Lord took notice of you. Yeah. And when He touched her, yeah. she glorified God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't need, I don't need some audience participation on this. Yes, sir. And, and, and you might have to just tell me, Pastor, that's enough. Read yes, 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 yes. Give him power. He touched it. And we're like making another result. Give him power. And she glorified yeah. God. Yeah. That's right. He touched it. And, and she didn't run out. She stood right there. I think y'all get warmed up. Yeah, yeah. But, but let me catch up with you and get warmed up with you as well. Yeah. 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 Luke, 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 Luke not only tells us that she glorified God. All right. Can I, can I just raise you right there while you're already warmed up? Because this can be the same war. Glorifying God means acknowledge His greatness and give Him honor by praising and worshiping Him. Because He and He alone deserves to be praised, honored, and worshiped. Now I'm back here. I'm getting ready to even go like Mount St. Sue. I'm getting ready to mount and to melt and to explode like Mount St. Helens. Because I don't know what that looked like. I don't know what that sounded like. But I do have some idea. Because, brothers and sisters, saints of God, you can only imagine that. Been over for 18 years in misery, days of nights and nights of days, wanting to be like others, or wanting to be pain free. And Jesus says, Come here, girl. And he lays his hands on her. And when he lays his hands on her, she starts raising her head. He lays his hands on her. And she lifted up her head.
wait and walk with me for a minute. Because in light of y'all ain't walking with me. In light of the crises of the woman and the compassion of Jesus, there's a there's a problem. And the third problem, the insight is the compassionless people. They're right here in the text. We got to make it up. We got to go shopping. They're in the Walmart. They're right here. The problem has a twin element. Let me hurry. Because Jesus healed her. Not just because he healed her, but because he healed her on the Sabbath day. The Lord healing people on the Sabbath day was always a reoccurring source of contention between him and the religious rulers. When they should be listening to him, they're more concerned with what Jesus does than the day he does it all. Proud Jesus has heard the ministry. Am I making this clear for you, beloved? This has been an ongoing problem and a source of contention between Jesus and the religious leaders. And it will make you raise the question how short-sighted these synagogue officials are. To be more focused on the day of the week that it's done on and at the same time miss the miracle. <laughs> you know, sometimes, thank you, Spirit, for giving me a chance to make an insert. Sometimes I, I watch the saints when we're having our worship and praise. And sometimes I've seen some hope. We haven't to preach too long. Maybe for you. But there's somebody who needs to know that just maybe your deliverance and greatness is connected with your praise as opposed to your power. Maybe, maybe if you just learn to, to, to praise him like the rest of us praise him. But you know when you're praising him, you ain't got time to be thinking about how bad he is. All that other crazy stuff. All you got time to do when you're thinking about praise is thinking about the power of God, the peace of God, the presence of God, and not only hit somebody. And it's just like all in one. They, 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 they don't mix. And when they ought to be listening to them, they're more concerned with what Jesus is doing and the day he does it all. Let me hurry and get y'all out the way. Because throughout his ministry, there have been those who have targeted him in order to attack him. The woman to be in this condition this long and then to have the religious community make self-imposed sanctions while they misquote and misinterpret scripture to justify their stand against Jesus because this is front and center where they've got the problem and it's also where they fail to see the problem that they have. Yeah. All right. Beloved, they missed it. Because in their pious, religious, self-centered, sensuous, driven attitude, they missed it. Yeah. Did you hear what they said in verse number 14? Mm -hmm. Listen to what they said. They said there are six days yeah. in which work should be done. Yeah. So come during them and get healed. Yeah. And not on the Sabbath day. Yeah. Here's a short version of it. Do it another day. Jesus, don't do it today. Are you serious? This ain't about them. But listen to what they said and how it reveals their insensitivity and unconcern for and about this woman. Can't you hear the other side of that statement? It says she gonna be all right. One more day for her to wait ain't gonna hurt. She been already waiting 18 years. What's another day? Really? How easy it is to say that when they don't have to live with their situation. Just maybe here's a good place where we might need to consider our attitude and response to people we may have been critical of and felt that they are awake. You know, that's easy to say when it ain't she. 
Now, he didn't do the same with the name in your family. Could this be a call to all of us saying, what if it was you? Would you say, wait another day when your situation is screaming? I need a healing now. I need help now. I need mercy now. I need deliverance now. But it gets even better, beloved. Please don't leave the scene of the crime. Yes, because, yes, the first and the last word in this matter is important. He gives a woman a word of deliverance, and lastly, he gives these insensitive religious figures the final word. Look with me, if you will, at verse 15 and 16. And I'm trying to get you all up out here. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrite, you act as I on the stage of life. Yeah. Does not each of you on the Sabbath unite on Tyrell his ox or his ducky from the stall and lead him away to warning him? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years, should she not have been released from this bond on the Sabbath day? You give me a minute to work it out? Jesus' answer appeals to two important matters. First, Jesus' answer framed as a question appeals to the common practice among the Jews, which was never prohibited, watering their cattle on the Sabbath day. It would be a cruel thing to not do, to have an animal that works and provides for you and you won't even give him more. Letting the cattle rest on the Sabbath day as the law directed would be worse than working them. Yeah. And so to the Israelites in that time, their livestock, their oxen, their donkey, their sheep, their cattle were important to them because that's what that's where their livelihood came from. Their income came from. I wonder if you still pray for them. Indeed, they will take care of them on the Sabbath day. But now here was a woman. Let's bring in the parallel. They have been kept captive by Satan for 18 years. Y'all still walk praying with me and walking with me. Surely she is more important than an ox or a donkey or a sheep or a cow. Surely she can be set free even on the Sabbath day. But rather, Blue second, Jesus appeals the position of this woman in the family of God in verse 16. All right. Jesus says she ain't some wanna be some casual social light. She is a daughter of Abraham. Right. Lord, have me preach right. Jesus refers to as a daughter of Abraham. And since she's a daughter of Abraham, she's got legitimate connections back to the father of the nation. And since she's got such a description and pedigree, she reserves the right just like the sons of Abraham. Lord, have me preach your right. In front of all of the upright religious folk, Jesus gave this humble woman a place of honor when he confirmed that she too belonged to the family of Abraham. Jesus is telling them that this woman is a daughter of Abraham. No more and no less. She isn't the crippled woman that you're looking at. She is a somebody, though you think she's a nobody. She should not be shunned and pushed aside and treated like she's some tomorrow's garbage. She has a label on her and in her life. She identifies with Abraham. And if she identifies with Abraham, she's got the blessings of Abraham. If she identifies with Abraham, God is with her. Let me not tell Abraham in Genesis, I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. And I will make them to see this more numerous than the sand of the sea that you can count. Come here, girl. They may not think much of it, but the master does. She's a child of Abraham. Of Abraham. Jesus stands up for her. Jesus stands up with her. When others wanted to disregard her and disrespect her, Jesus said, y'all don't even know who you're dealing with because she got pedigree. Though she's in pain and got a predicament, I can take her back to her genealogy tree. I can connect her back to Abraham. Yes, who's a father called out of her of Chaldean Wife was sitting alone in a Tepafina house, oh God. And he said, to Come here, Abraham. I know you ain't much of nothing and nobody, but I'm going to make your name great. Lord, help me today. I don't know what good you came out of. I don't know what situation you came out of. But if you belong to God, you are a king's kid. It doesn't matter what your life looks like before. 
We talked about the compassion of Jesus. We talked about the compassionless people. But I can't send y'all home like this. And the word of God won't even. You got your Bible open? Look with me at verse number 17. And as he said this, all of the haters, I'm sorry, all of the opponents were being humiliated. And the entire crowd was rejoicing over all the glorious things being done by him. I can sit down and take my seat, but I will after I talk to you. The celebration comes after the humiliation. They tried to keep her down. But Jesus raised her up. Yes, sir. He sees it all. He knows it all. And just like he did to the bit old woman, he calls her over to himself. Yeah. And he says to her, come to me. Come to me. Let me put my hands on you. He said to somebody who showed up today, come here. Come to me. And let me put my hands on you. No, you've been down a long time. I know you've been struggling. I know you're near suffocation now. But come to me. Let me put my hands on you. Come to me and let me heal you. Come to me. Let me raise you up. Let me take all that has been bitter and crooked in your life and make you straight and strong. Let me wipe away all of the loveliness inside of you. Because I want you to know that you are valuable. Yes, because you are a child of Abraham. Yes, you are God's child. Yes, and because you are God's child, yes. you are loved by God. You are loved without restriction. Yes. You are loved without limitation. Yes. You are loved without reservation. Yes. You are loved without condition. Yes. And just as he sees in this woman's life, I want somebody to help me praise him. About me and you today. Yes, Praise the Lord. Praise he sees the inside of our need. Yeah. He sees what sometimes we can't even see in and about ourselves. Yeah. He sees that our anger at other people is so often really anger at our own selves. He sees that it is that we are afraid. Because we are afraid to look at our own shell. Yes, because we know yes. that there's a lot of garbage there. And that we'd rather not talk about it or deal with it. He sees the good front that we sometimes put on yes. when we are out in the public. Even here when we show up at a church. It is often a cover up of the hurts that we've suffered over the years. Years of rejection, years of disappointment, years of betrayal, years of failure, years of losses, years of fears. Praise the Lord that He sees the ugly stuff inside of us, ugly things that others have said to us and done to us, ugly things. Am I right about it? That we have done to our own selves, ugly things that were. Am I right about it? Look at the text again, beloved. Because the crowd celebrates the woman's healing. And that's what I want to be here with you. They don't celebrate because he put his hands on them or he called them to him. But they celebrate for somebody other than themselves. I'm wondering, is there anybody here? That got an unselfish praise. I thank him not for what he already done for me. I thank him not for the way he brought you from. I thank him not for the ways he's made for me. But I'm talking about you now. I'm asking you, uh, will you praise him for somebody on your road? Will you praise him for somebody else in the room? Will you praise him for somebody in your family? Will you praise him for the power of somebody else? Will you praise 
know you've been struggling. I know you've been but ain't been aggravated, but can I tell you today? The Lord is a great healer.